My name's Monty. Uh, I'm gonna tell you about when the universe gave me a grizzly bear. Um, I recently experienced the most profound loss I've ever experienced in the world. And it was um, like any loss that profound, it completely took the rug out from underneath me and was so painful and confusing. And I had anger and was heartbroken and devastated. Um, and I was staying with my best friend and his wife, uh, Chris and Kieran, and they were supporting me and taking care of me because I wasn't doing a good job of anything really but feeling very intensely. And uh, after a couple days of that, which pretty much getting through a day felt like a huge success at that point, I decided to give Chris and Kieran a little space and go stay with my friend Chester. Um, I live in the middle of nowhere in Alaska. So to describe where these people live as a subdivision would be grossly overstating what's going on over there. Uh, it's more like two dirt roads ripped into the middle of nowhere. So to get from Chris's house to Chester's, we walked through the woods in the dark, get to Chester's house. Chester and I pull like an all-night heart-to-heart where my 90-pound husky mutt Shanna slept on my chest in her most aggressive version of maybe you'd feel better if you pet a big furry dog. <laughs> in the morning, I woke up and Shanna was gone, which I wasn't worried about her because I know how Shanna rolls and I know she went back to Chris and Karen's for early breakfast. <laughs> so I was left there at Chester's with just me and my brown dog, Doc, who's a very shy fellow, Doc. And uh, Chester and I drink coffee, smoke cigarettes. I don't even smoke cigarettes, but it felt like I should that morning, and I smoked the shit out of some cigarettes. <laughs> um, I leave Chester's house, my phone dies, and I realize I don't have my sleeping bag. So I go back in Chester's, I get my sleeping bag, I put it over my shoulders. As Chester says goodbye, he puts his hand on my heart, and he says, you have an unlimited well of power right here. And I felt it. Um, I do. I have an unlimited well of power. We all do. And I walked into the woods by myself. Um, and I felt alone. And then I got lost. And I felt lost. And you're like, dude, you were like right in between your friends' houses in the middle of nowhere in Alaska, okay? These aren't like backyards where you hop the wrong fence. And Chester's the kind of guy who meticulously doesn't walk the same way from his house to Chris's, so it stays wild out there. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm lost in the woods by myself. That's cool. It's kind of how I feel in general right now. And if Shannon was with me, she would have been leading me back to Chris's, but Doc stands behind me at all times. And I had a premonition, not of something specific, but of an impending moment. And I took two more steps, and I looked to my left, and there was a full-grown grizzly bear 25 yards away from me. And I'm a wilderness guide in Alaska, and I've had a handful of bear encounters and some with grizzly bears. And I've been mock-charged by grizzly bears, and I've never seen an animal, bear, or anything look at me in the way that this bear looked at me and immediately charged me full speed. And I felt naked in the world. And I turned my head for one instant away from that bear, and I knew exactly where my 357 was, and it was six miles away on my bedside table. <laughs> Because, like I said, wasn't doing, like, the best job taking care of myself. <sighs> and the next thought I had in the instant that I looked away from that bear is if you look away from this thing, if you try and run for one second, you are going to die right here in between the houses of the friends who love and support you. You are going to die, and they're going to find you with claw marks in your back. They are not going to find me with claw marks in my back. And I turned around, and I planted my feet, and I put my teal and green sleeping bag over my head. And I looked right at this bear that is now 
close. <laughs> and I took all of that anger and confusion and I let it out at that bear. Ah! And the bear stopped. <laughs> And the bear looked at me, and it roared. And I let the well out one more time, right in that bear's face. And its lip quivered, and it walked away. <laughs> and then I had to chill out, because if you yell, Doc will not hang out with you. So I was like, hey, Doc, it's cool, man. It's me. I love you. And we left, and then I was at Chris and Kieran's house, and Kieran gave me a big hug. And for my friends, the lesson was really simple. Carry your gun, you stupid hippie. <laughs> but for me, the lesson was much more profound, that your demons are coming for you, and you got to look them in the eye. Thank you.